Welcome back, Outlaws. On today's episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing and assembly of the Castmaster Propane Furnace Model GG5000. So stay tuned. Although it has an American flag on the box, it's clearly made in China. Only time will tell if it stands up to the Outlaws' scrutiny. And now, without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed. I've been researching several furnaces to look for the right one to suit my needs. This being my first furnace, I wanted something affordable that I could practice with. This model with the 5 kilogram crucible seemed to be the perfect balance between capacity of the crucible, price, and overall size. We found this unit on the Castmaster website for about $219. Although this unit is made in China, the website states that their melting furnace kit is different than the competition and was designed from the ground up here in the US of A. The first thing we see here are the long handled tongs that come with the unit. They state on the website that they include these tongs to make gripping and pouring the crucible easy and safe. Here it looks like we have some warranty work and the user's manual. I always like to review the manual first. That way I can compare what's in the manual to what's actually in the box. By all appearances, this looks pretty straightforward and simple. There's also a good video that Cast Masters has put out on YouTube so that you can see how they would recommend that you put this together. I'm not sponsored by Cast Masters in any way. The purchase of this was based on me just wanting a furnace and getting the most bang for my buck. And now for the best picture. May I have the envelope, please? Thank you. Looks like the winner is me. We have some promotional stuff, an extended warranty card, and this last one looks like a card for a discount for 10% off on the next purchase. I'll go ahead and put these in here for now and put them away for later. Let's see what we have inside. We'll get this foam packing off and there's the lid. It feels pretty good. It's got some weight to it. You can see the refractory right there. The ceramic fiber insulation seems to be intact and undamaged. It seems that they put some thought into protecting the parts that could be easily damaged. So far, it's pretty well packaged. This appears to be the burner housing and the air regulator. Here's the propane regulator and hose with the burner jet at the end. And it looks like a little wrench and washer also. In the center here, wrapped in plastic, this looks like it's the crucible. Yep, that's sure enough what it is. Let's pull it out of here and get a quick look at it. I went ahead and put the crucible back in this plastic bag. As you can see here, that graphite gets everywhere. It's already all over my hands. So putting it back in here until I'm ready to use it will keep it from making a mess everywhere. 
Next, let's pull this furnace housing out and check it out a little closer. In the bottom here, you can see the heat resistant fire brick. That looks like it'll work. The crucible will sit on that and keep it up off the bottom of the insulation. I think that's pretty much it for the box. The only thing left in the bottom is a packet of desiccant. I always like to save these because you can reuse these for other purposes. Up next, let's lay everything out and start the assembly. Another extra step that I noticed they made was they put a cap on the ends of these tongs to prevent them from coming apart and poking through the box. These tongs should work great for the first couple of tries while breaking this in and learning how to use it. But after that, I think I'm probably going to get something a little longer with some handles on it to make it a little easier to use. Next, let's get this regulator and burner assembly out and see what it looks like and get it ready to put together. The jet of the burner seems to be a standard welding tip, which you should be able to find in any welding supply shop should it need to be replaced. After comparing everything that was in the box to what was in the user's manual, I think we're ready to lay it all out, take one last look at it, and put it together. There are a few extra items that didn't come with the kit that I went ahead and put in this video to make it easier to put this together. The first is Teflon tape that's rated for natural gas and propane. Next is a standard open end half inch wrench. And finally, an adjustable wrench to help tighten everything up. Additional, but not mandatory for this list, is your favorite adult beverage. One thing that I observed is that the burner tube assembly is slightly different than what's illustrated in the manual. I'll have to check this out a little closer and see what exactly is different about it. The end here that goes inside the furnace itself appears to be the same. This end here where the fuel line or gas line attaches is slightly different. Let's take a closer look and see if we can figure it out. In the manual, it shows the gas line going in at a 90 degree angle, which is slightly different than the one that I have here. Maybe this is the new improved design, but the manual should reflect that. Also looking at the manual, it shows the air mixture setup to be a little different as well. Now that we've double checked all the discrepancies in the manual, it's time to get it put together. 
I'm really liking this IPA. I didn't realize it was 6.2%. I better take it easy with this one. We're going to start by putting our Teflon thread sealant on first. This is where we'll be using our wrenches. Let's check out this one that they provided to us in the kit first. Let's take a quick look at the wrench that was provided with the kit. You could probably do the total assembly with just this one wrench, but I recommend getting another half inch wrench and an adjustable wrench just to make things easier. There was no mention of this washer here in the manual, and it wasn't depicted in a photograph anywhere, but I'm assuming that it goes somewhere in this assembly here. That's another thing that should be in this manual. I'm not sure why it's not. First, per the instructions, we're going to start with the Teflon thread sealant. You'll only need one to two wraps, as this portion isn't really held under a lot of pressure. It's just to keep the threads tight and secure in the burner assembly. Always double check that you're wrapping in the direction that you're going to be turning your threads. If you put it in the opposite direction, as soon as you tighten the threads, it will undo your tape. Go ahead and thread the burner housing on the assembly, being careful not to cross thread it as part of it is brass and could cross thread very easily. To snug this down, I'm going to go ahead and use the little wrench that came with the kit just to try it out, but I recommend using a thicker half inch wrench. At this point, you may want to use the adjustable wrench just to snug it down on the larger end of this tube where this nut is. This nut doesn't seem to be metric and it doesn't seem to be standard. It's somewhere in between. So I found that this adjustable wrench was useful. You can also take the smaller wrench that comes with the kit and put it here and tighten against each other just to snug it down, although it's not really that necessary to do so. Next, we're going to be inserting the completed burner assembly into this portion here in the furnace. This is where our other half-inch wrench will come in handy. After loosening these bolts up to allow clearance for the tube to slide in, you'll take your half-inch wrench after first tightening them down with your hands. Go ahead and snug it down all three bolts and that should be enough to hold it in place. I was surprised that these bolts were a standard half inch size bolt. I was expecting a metric. Visually and physically inspect all your connections and make sure they're secure. Mix up some soapy water in a spray bottle. In this section right here, you can spray just to make sure that there's no leaks. That's the end of this video, part one. 
Now that we've got it all put together, part two will consist of seasoning the crucible and the first use. Once again, thanks for watching. That's all, folks.